So, you're a biologist and wildlife researcher, guiding a tour in the tropics. Um, can spiders fly? A woman asks. You say that flying spiders exist. They use the Earth's electric field to lift themselves into the air. During and after a thunderstorm, charged electric particles form in the sky. Spiders climb a tree or a tall blade of grass and release their webs. Their silk clings to the electric fields in the air and raises spiders in the sky. They can fly very high and thousands of miles away. Other spiders can fly without using silk. Technically, they don't fly, but glide through the air and choose where they land. They climb trees and jump. In the air, they stretch out their front legs to maneuver during the flight and land on the selected point with amazing accuracy. But they don't have wings, right? Another girl asks. Hey, I can't do a convincing girl voice either, but here I am anyway. The girl and the other tourists look worried. You're laughing. (laughs) Of course not. At this point, your hair stands on end. You feel a weak gust of wind on the back of your neck and hear a strange buzzing sound. You turn around and see a gray spider with small black eyes and long, thin legs hovering right in front of your face. It hangs in the air with the help of little white wings. It beats them as fast as a dragonfly and flies off into the sky at great speed. Well, you've realized you've just seen an unknown (laughs) species of spider. Then, you notice other flying spiders around. They're all different sizes and shapes, but all have wings. Terrified, Ah! tourists scatter. But you, you're dazzled by the arthropods floating in the air. Suddenly, you notice a large Brazilian wandering spider among them. It's one of the most venomous spiders in the world. Now, you're scared too, and slowly retreating. As you arrive to the city, you see people panicking all around. Hundreds of spiders are flying around, terrifying the residents. No one knows they have arachnophobia until they see a large spider flying above the ground. You run to the research center, and together with other scientists, you try to find out what's happening. You catch a few spiders and put them in a container. Next morning, you study these creatures and come up with an important discovery. During its lifetime, any spider molts. Its inner body is growing, but not the outer shell, the exoskeleton. So they need to shed it. The younger the spider, the more often it molts. Young ones molt one to two times a month. An adult spider does this once or twice a year. Scientists have found that after the seventh molt, spiders produce wings located inside the body. Zoologists never noticed this detail before for some reason. It seems like the wings were well hidden. Now, humanity is witnessing the top of spider evolution. They've been growing their wings for millions of years. And now the moment has come when they can use them. Within several days, the world is changing dramatically. Before, spiders were hiding in dark corners, small underground tunnels, inside tree trunks. Most of them didn't like sunlight and were timid predators that never left the premises of their webs. But now, with the wings, spiders got brave and audacious. They seem to have felt the power and the smell of fear coming from humans. Spiders gather in groups and weave webs on all buildings and roads. City services don't have time to rid the streets from spider silk. Another problem is that spiders attack and bite everybody. Now, no matter where you're going, you need to wear protective clothing and a helmet before you leave the house. Spiders act like they are real masters of this planet. You might not think it's so scary. Even with wings, spiders are small and only eat flies and other insects. But imagine that huge, hairy tarantulas the size of an adult's palm filled the sky. You'd hear the flapping of its wings from afar. You wouldn't confuse this sound with anything. Big spiders can't fly using thin, transparent wings like other insects. Their wings resemble those of bats. They never lived in large groups before. But now, it seems the common world dominion goal has united them. The number of spiders is growing every day. They catch almost all flying and crawling insects. Before that, the arthropod population was controlled by birds, small carnivorous animals, and other creatures. At first, the birds were delighted about so much flying lunch around. But they've grown helpless when venomous spiders became too many. The natural life cycle is disrupted. 
Humanity's sounding the alarm because the number of bees around the world is declining. Bees are one of the most important creatures on our planet. Almost no plants on Earth will be able to produce fruit and seeds if the bees disappear. Spiders that hunt insects in the sky resemble fishers who catch fish with nets. Right in the air, the spider produces a thick web that hangs from its body like a curtain. Next, the spider floats in the sky without moving for hours on end and waits for insects to fly into its webs. Those species that don't spin webs, such as the jumping spider, catch the prey with incredible speed and accuracy. They have a perfect vision that surpasses the human one. If these spiders see their dinner from a distance, they quickly jump on it. Now, with wings, they've become even faster. Enormous cobwebs cover the roofs of skyscrapers. Hundreds of thousands of arachnids unite to create a web so thick that a person can get stuck in it. To protect themselves from the rain, they create a water-repellent canopy made of silk. It's so strong that you can jump on it like a trampoline. Big animals are also afraid to go far from home. Bears, lions, wolves... Leopards, hyenas, and other predators run away as fast as they can right at the moment they hear a flapping sound approaching from the sky. Many spiders settle inside cars parked in the street and build nests there. In just a few days, such a car turns into a white cocoon wrapped in silk, and the interior is filled with millions of little spiders. That's why many drivers cover their cars with a canopy and spray it with vinegar. To deal with spiders, People spray repellent created specifically for sky spiders, as they call them. This helped at first, but in just a few weeks, the spiders became immune to this substance. Biologists shrugged their shoulders in dismay. Spiders adapt to any conditions and continue to increase their population. A state of emergency is imposed in lots of countries. No one leaves their homes. Food is delivered by drones, but the spiders have learned to disarm them. Hundreds of spiders pounce on a drone and entangle it in a thick layer of silk. When the drone falls to the ground, the spiders eat the pizza and other food. It seems there's no salvation, but scientists suddenly find places around the world where spiders don't live. These places are rainforests and jungles. Soon it turns out the bosses there are web-manipulating wasps. They're probably the only creatures that the spiders are afraid of today. These wasps are parasites that use spiders to nurse their offspring. When it sees a spider, the wasp flies up and simply drops an egg on the spider's back. The larva hatches and begins to feed on the spider. It affects the arachnid on a chemical level and alters its mind. The spider begins to weave a unique web with a strange pattern and shape. This web is a safe place for the parasite to develop. Next, the larva leaves the spider, clings to the web, and creates a cocoon. Inside, it turns into a wasp and flies away to find another spider. Biologists create artificial terrariums where they breed colonies of these wasps. Every day, people release hundreds of thousands of parasites into the sky, where they meet the spiders. Soon, the arachnids start losing. They can't resist the wasps with their small eggs sticking to their backs. Balance returns to nature. The population of bees and other insects is being restored. Spiders can't fly anymore because of the parasites sitting on their bodies. So, after a while, they simply forget how to use their wings and start crawling on the ground again. Then, another problem comes. The parasites are becoming too many. But this time, people are saved by birds. They reduce the number of wasps and drive them away back to the tropics. Okay, stay with me here. If you gathered together and weigh all the spiders in the world, you would get 250 million tons of arachnids. Wait, 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 wait. Before you run away, for comparison, the Titanic's weight was 52,000 tons, and the Great Pyramid of Giza is as heavy as 6.5 million tons. Well, you're right. That doesn't make me feel better either. But on we go. The biggest spider people know about is the South American Goliath bird-eater. Yeah. This brown, furry, puppy-sized arachnid usually has a foot-long leg span. Its body is the size of a large fist, and its weight is more than 6 ounces. 
When the creature's moving, it makes bizarre, eerie sounds. They're the clicking of the spider's feet. They have hardened tips that hit the ground like a horse's hooves, just not as loud. If you see this imposing creature in the rainforest and come close to it, you might notice it rubbing its hind legs against its belly. How cute, that would be your first thought. But then you'd scream in pain. This spider protects itself by sending out clouds of hairs that have microscopic barbs on them. If they got in your eyes and nose, they'd be super painful and itchy. These hairs would also stay there for hours or even days. Now, that sounds extremely unsettling. But imagine what our planet would look like if spiders were the size of jeeps. The world occupied by giant arachnids is a dark and gloomy place. It's also dangerous. You can't let your guard down even for a second. Your enemy is lightning fast, hungry, and cunning. Normal-sized spiders eat 880 tons of insects each year. But in your world, huge monsters need much more food to live. Spiders roam the planet, gulping down pretty much any life form they see. If people gave up and didn't fight them, Earth would turn into a lifeless barren land within a year. Up to 6% of people all over the globe have arachnophobia, extreme fear of spiders. But if these creatures were that much larger, this number would be way bigger, you think? Picture a creature more than 5 feet tall with a leg span of 14 feet. The spider's covered in coarse, thick hair, which makes the animal look disgusting. Its body is divided into two parts, separated in the middle by a slim waist. A set of massive jaws, terrifyingly long and sharp fangs, and eight spherical eyes, as huge as basketballs. But the creepiest of them all? Spiders without eyes. They live in caves and other dark places. If you meet such a specimen, your reaction won't be fast enough to escape. These creatures compensate for their lack of vision by feeling vibrations. They also have an astonishing sense of smell. Terrified of spiders, people constantly invent new ways to get rid of them. Being caught by a creature several times your size is everyone's biggest nightmare. One of the scariest things about spiders is the way they deal with insects they catch. Most of these predators don't eat their prey whole. Mm -mm. At first, it gets cocooned in silk and injected with the spider's digestive fluid. It paralyzes the prey and makes its insides liquid. That's not good. Then the creature pulls everything edible into its stomach through the hairs covering its mouth and pincer-like jaws. In other words, once a monster spider gets you, there's no way to escape. Oh, and don't forget about horrifying spider webs. Who hasn't ended up with their face covered with sticky threads at least once in your life? In your new reality, though, spotting a web in time means getting a chance to survive. Even regular-sized spiders can create webs that cover trees and houses and stretch over rivers for 80 feet. That's why if a new world creature chooses your house as its new home, it's easier and safer to move out as fast as you can. People have found a way to deal with giant spider webs, but how they do it depends on which species has created it. If the web was produced by a spider that's more active at night, people destroy them with help of UV lamps that replace sunlight. The webs made by spiders living in dry areas are afraid of liquid. Those from humid environments don't like getting dry, and so on. Another problem. One day, you may come home and discover a huge monster or 50 of them living in your basement. Okay, admittedly, you're likely to spot these creatures before they reach any impressive size. They'll be too loud to go unnoticed. Spiders don't give birth to their babies. They create egg sacs that can contain hundreds of eggs. If such a sac somehow ends up in your home, you've got a problem on your hands. In a couple of weeks, those eggs hatch into baby spiders. After that, it can take from two weeks to one year for the babies to reach their full size. Oh, by the way, people have figured out how to use spider webs. The silk they're made of is very light. If it was a tiny regular spider, a strand of its silk long enough to circle Earth would weigh a mere 18 ounces. In a spider dozens of times larger, silk threads weigh more, but they're also much, much stronger. They can withstand extreme temperatures from minus 40 to 430 degrees Fahrenheit. 
People know how to collect spider silk. They use this material to make ultra-strong ropes. Almost all fabrics in the world are made from spider's threads. Wear-resistant and lightweight clothing, seat belts and parachutes, bottles and cups, surgical threads and bandages, rust-free panels on cars and boats, artificial ligaments and tendons, all thanks to spiders. But probably the best thing about silk, it's biodegradable. Earth has become a much cleaner place since people started using this material in production. Along with using spider silk threads, people also gather the glue covering the webs. It's a unique substance. It stays wet in the open air and is still sticky after having trapped several insects. Up close, this glue looks like tiny beads on a string, or rather golf-sized balls on the rope if we're talking about car-sized arachnids. They produce much stickier glue than good old regular-sized spiders. That's why, in most cases, it replaces hammers and nails. All kinds of vehicles and vessels are built with the use of spider glue. The only drawback of this sticky substance, you have to be extra careful while gathering it. Once you get trapped, it's a tricky feat to escape. That's why people go glue hunting in large groups. But even if you get into a spider web by accident, there's a chance to survive if you're fast enough. Moths and butterflies have a special layer of scales on their wings. They can shed this layer if they get caught. Use this trick, take off your clothes and run for your life. But how come spiders don't get tangled in their own webs? These arachnids can spin sticky and non-sticky silk. They avoid walking on the sticky parts of their webs. Plus, they have special movable claws on their feet. These claws grip and let go of the threads when they're moving. Also, spiders' feet are covered with thousands of hairs. When they walk, these hairs create countless points of contact between the animal and the surface. That's why you can see gigantic spiders lounging on rooftops or climbing skyscrapers. By the way, when the terrifying creatures do move, they do it at breakneck speed. The giant house spider is one of the fastest spider species in our world. It can move at a speed of almost 2 feet per second. That's more than a mile per hour. But creatures as large as a jeep can speed up to 50-plus miles per hour. In other words, you wouldn't be able to escape from them by driving away. In the giant spider world, people have to install tons of artificial lights. Dense, thick spider webs are everywhere. They appear throughout the night and cover large areas, making days dim. Trees and not-so-sturdy constructions often collapse under the weight of spider silk. Luckily, it's just an imaginary world. Spiders can't grow to be as large as a car. Long story short, their hormones prevent these creatures from becoming larger than they're supposed to be. Whew. Ah, it's a lovely day for a boat ride in the swamp. If not for these mosquitoes, then today would be perfect. But for some reason, the mosquitoes keep getting bigger the further you go into the swamp. They started out as tiny, almost invisible insects, and can now be the size of your thumb. You can hear their buzzing as they whiz past you. You go deeper to investigate why they're so big. Eventually, you see a large cluster of mosquitoes the size of your hand buzzing around. They notice you and start flying toward you. You grab a branch and start swatting them away. You run back to your boat and try to escape, but they follow you and some manage to land on you. You swat them away, but more mosquitoes pop out of nowhere the size of a basketball. You start your boat and speed your way back to the mainland. As you arrive, you see everyone running away in a frenzy, panicking because of the giant mosquitoes. Some of them are as big as a large dog. People are ducking under picnic tables, while some are running back to their cars and driving away. You get off the boat and run toward the closest grocery store, along with dozens of people. The employees lock up the gates, but the large glass panels show the mosquitoes multiplying. They're getting bigger and bigger until you can see one as big as a car zipping by. It's so strong that it landed on an empty car and crushed it. Everyone inside is ducking away out of fear. You try to calm everyone down and not make any noise. The mosquitoes are landing on the glass panel, blocking out the natural light. It's getting dark inside. Someone turns up the volume on the TV to the breaking news. Mosquitoes are flying rampant all across the continent, destroying natural resources and infiltrating cities. People are advised to stay indoors until further notice. 
The mosquitoes notice that there are people in the store, so they try to get in by force. A car-sized mosquito flies around in the sky, unaware of what's happening below. Everyone hears some noise coming from the back room. The employees realize they didn't lock the doors. A large mosquito enters and knocks down everything. Everyone runs around in a panic while throwing random stuff at it. Some people grab a fire extinguisher and spray it until it flies to the back room. Some employees lock the door and barricade it so that nothing can enter. Everyone waits nervously. The TV broadcasts some live coverage of how giant mosquitoes are flying everywhere. A helicopter is forced to land because the mosquitoes are flying around wildly in the skies. Everyone shudders when they hear the sound of more mosquitoes buzzing around near the back door. Hours pass, and more mosquitoes keep coming endlessly. There are no people outside, and much of the urban and landscape design in the park is destroyed or overrun by giant insects. Some people eat whatever is available, while some are sleeping. A piece of breaking news interrupts the live coverage and shows that there will be armored buses ready to pick up people near the picnic site. However, the buses won't drive to hot spots since it'll be too dangerous. The only way to get on them is by being on the highway in two hours. Everyone tries to call their loved ones, but the cell towers have been knocked down and no one can call anyone. The mosquito that broke in a while ago destroyed the only landline that was present. People are arguing about whether they should stay or go. More insects cover the only clear patches of the sky until the sun disappears. The people split into two parties, those who are leaving to catch the bus and those who want to stay. The employees know a back way that can quickly lead to the highway. The only problem is that it'll take around 20 minutes on foot and there are no cars to use. The way is tricky. First, they would need to escape through the main entrance and head through the bushy forest behind the dumpsters. Over there, they can enter a building, possibly through the sewers, which will lead to the lake next to the highway. The first party decides to leave. They prepare supplies for the breakout. Every second, more mosquitoes arrive, covering the sky. They gear up with anything they can find to protect themselves. Mosquitoes are attracted to the carbon dioxide that people breathe out, and they know that there's a source coming from the grocery store. Once everyone is ready, they get some makeshift torches and light them up. They add some barbecue fuel to keep the fire going. You're part of the party that is planning to escape. The doors open, and everyone makes a break for it behind the dumpster. Many mosquitoes try to attack you, but the smoke from the fire repels them. Every second, more mosquitoes are filling the sky and the environment. Many people end up running back into the store, since they couldn't make it past the dumpster to the other building. Eventually, the rest of the people, including yourself, run toward the building. But it's locked, and no one can break down the door. Plan B is to break the glass mm. from a window and crawl inside. You grab a rock and smash the closest window. The only problem is that the mosquitoes can follow you inside. So without any options left, you pull through and run to the basement of the building to find the entrance to the sewer. Success! You found it, and everyone descends to the bottom. No mosquitoes in sight, just rats. You're walking knee-high in sewer water with it flowing past you, but it's only a few minutes until you reach the river. Another problem is that the sewer isn't going to the lake, but somewhere deep into the sewer channels. You follow it until you see what looks like an outlet. You make it out and are near a water hole where all the discarded sewage leads next to the swamp. The only problem is that you're not next to the highway anymore, and time is running out. More mosquitoes are swarming the air, but they don't bother buzzing next to you. You notice some cat-sized creatures floating on the water. These are baby mosquitoes, or the larva, and they're coming your way. You and everyone else swim for your lives to the shore. The giant alpha mosquito soars into the air and swoops down to try and grab someone, but it misses. Everyone makes it to the thick, swampy area where no giant mosquitoes can enter. Everyone covers themselves with branches to protect themselves. 15 minutes until the armored bus arrives. Since the mosquitoes can't enter, this will be the best place to hide until then. Darkness falls, and still, no bus! It's been three hours, and nothing! The mosquitoes are still buzzing around, and everyone is getting uncomfortable under the thick bushes. After a while, everyone hears a roaring engine and sees lights flashing on the highway. 
Everyone gets up and runs to the bus, but you stop them to not draw the mosquitoes' attention. You volunteer to sneak out and stop the bus, and then everyone else can follow without drawing too much attention. You move a couple of branches, step over some tree bark, and crawl to the highway. You try to hold your breath so that you won't make any heavy breathing sounds. You reach the side of the road and wave your arms to stop the bus. It pulls over and the door opens. You signal the rest of the people to follow and they follow your lead. Everyone is inside and safe. Some mosquitoes notice and start pecking on the bus, but the armor is sturdy. The bus drives off looking for other people along the road. And suddenly, a Goliath lands in front of you. The bus stops and sees a mosquito the size of a Boeing 747. It looks straight at you. It gets ready to attack, but the bus speeds under its legs and drives off. The mosquito takes off and tries to catch the bus, but you enter a tunnel to the other side of the mountain. After a few minutes, you reach an open area with no trees or buildings. The bus is speeding while dodging obstacles along the way. Finally, you notice you are near the grocery store where you were held up. The bus opens the door for everyone inside to be taken to a safe zone. You hear from the aid workers that the whole world is being overrun by these giant creatures. As you drive along, you see a hybrid mosquito that has two heads and a scorpion's tail. It's as tall as the Statue of Liberty and it's ready to attack. Whatever is causing these mosquitoes to grow abnormally is also making them into hybrids and mutants. And you thought it was going to be a good Monday.